So good morning. Um, this is a, uh, an unusual short video um, for Al. Was it Al? Yeah, no, it wasn't Al. It was Ray. Ray, Al. Great rock and roll names. Um, Ray, sorry. Ray asked a couple of questions. One of them was, any chance of making a short video to cover the following points, measuring the bow on the neck and adjusting it by the truss rod? Um, so I have got a, a, another video on my channel somewhere about what a truss rod is there for, to, is there to do and what it isn't to do. Um, and just suffice to say, I'll try to keep this down to 15 minutes max so I can upload it from home. Um, but the truss rod isn't primarily there to adjust your action. Um, some people have a great misconception about that. Um, raising of the action is a secondary effect of adjusting the truss rod. The truss rod's per, per, um, primary purpose is, to, is, is as a mechanical device to allow you to counteract the strings loading on the wooden neck. Now the strings are trying to pull from the anchor at this end on the head, on the uh, tuners at this end and they're trying to pull together across their length and what they do in the process of doing that they are trying to bend the neck and bring these two ends closer together and that that is what causes curvature in the neck it follows that heavier gauge string you um, play with and perhaps the higher the setting the pitch you, you tune to <coughs> the more loading and therefore the more curvature um, you're going to get or relief in your neck. So relief, curvature and relief is the same sort of term. Now just as a quick quick rule of thumb, right, I try, can't keep this really simple, um, the, you can play a guitar with um, dead flat neck, okay, zero relief, okay. You can play a guitar with some or a lot of relief, positive, and you can't play a guitar with negative relief and that's known as a back bow okay that's known as relief and that's known as flat you can play these two um, if it's totally flat you may well get some fret slap and so on if it's uh, relieved with some curvature you will probably be able to hit, strike the strings quite hard now the purpose of I'll go back to the board a minute the purpose of relief in the neck is to basically to create a little bit of room once you've to, it's allow you to adjust the curvature of the neck to end up in a situation where you've got just enough curvature to allow the strings to spin now think about a rope being swung between two people the middle of the rope makes a big circle describes a big pitch if you like up and down and transferred to the guitar neck it's not strictly in the middle because the middle of the strings is about here but the middle of the bending neck is about there but somewhere around the middle of the neck the idea of allowing there to be some relief in the neck allows that spinning space for the strings okay and you do need a little bit um, if you if you strike the strings hard if you strum hard the question is how do we control it to the sort of point we want well that's how that's what adjusting the truss rod is for or adjusting the neck relief via the truss rod adjuster so first thing to say is don't be afraid of the um, truss rod you have to work quite hard to break it right if it's seized <coughs> on a guitar you've just bought from eBay or something then actually it, it can be surprisingly easy to shear off the adjuster if the whole thing is rusted up but that's relatively rare first thing I do um, when I when I have a a, a guitar even without any tools you can get an initial sense of the amount of relief or not in the neck that you've just bought with the strings on by pressing the string to the first and the last fret now some people do it slightly differently they do it there I tend to do it there the reason they do it there is because many people for many people and certainly on guitars like Les Paul's with a with a, um, a glued neck this is a fairly stiff and un inflexible part of the neck so people like to start kind of at the edge of the stiff part and then they go halfway in between that right now the point of pressing down on the first and this nearly last or this whatever it is 13th fret or at 14th wherever your neck thickens up the point of doing that is by pressing the string to these two frets you're creating a straight line with the remaining string and then you're looking relation in in relative to that straight line what's the neck underneath doing or the frets underneath and once you've done it you can sort of judge halfway roughly and you can see I can see on this guitar there is a gap of a certain amount 
So the first thing I've told myself is, first of all, it's not back bowed. Now, if you were to hold down, I, I go with the last fret, but if you were to hold down the first and last fret, or the first and the, what, 12, 13, 14, 15th, 16th, whatever, if you were to hold those two down and there was no gap between the string and the fret in the middle part, then uh, your neck is either flat or possibly even back bowed. All right? Now, if it's back bowed, what you'll find is because there's a hump in it, in the middle, any notes fretted here will hit the raised frets in the middle. If it's shaped like that, the frets in the middle are higher than the ones down this end, and you'll find these choke out, because that's a first sign. But you can see quite quickly, visually, whether it's got, um, whether it's dead flat, whether it's got a back bow, or whether it's got relief. Now my rule of thumb is, I do a quick test like this, and I see, oh look, it's got relief. Then my next question is, how much relief? Um, now, before I go on to that, if it was back bowed, um, I suppose I could, I could simulate this for you. So I'm going to make this neck back bowed by adjusting it. I'm going to try and make it back bowed. Which is pretty stiff, this truss rod. <laughs> Very stiff. It may not be the right neck to uh, demonstrate this on. In fact, this neck may be as, as flat as it's ever going to be. Mm. I have a sneaky suspicion this might be the case. So I probably picked the wrong neck. Anyway, just in principle, if it was back bowed, the first thing you'd need, if it's, sorry, if it's back bowed, the, uh, the neck has been, um, the truss rod has been done up tight to counteract the curvature and it's got rid of all the curvature and pushed it into the opposite shape. So you want to slack off the truss rod and allow the strings to pull some curvature back into the neck. And you do that by looking down at the end, if it's an end adjuster, you put your correct hex key in if it's a importy style guitar and then you turn and you allow the truss rod to undo. Now in this case this is pretty much just undoing um, it's, it's slack so I don't know if this truss rod is particularly working very well at all uh, but having done that little bit of counter adjustment what it's done is it's created a bit more space now it's a bit too much for my liking. Question then falls on you how much is too much or too little too little so the rule of thumb is that anything b from flat down to c as much as curvature as you want and all you need to know for your own preferred style is a couple of principles the first one is um, the flatter you go the the more likely that any high frets underneath the uh, strings are going to hit the strings as they're vibrating as they're spinning around like this okay um, when you get to flat, there's a very light, great likelihood that the string will hit the frets anyway, whether they're high or not, whether they're even or not. But certainly if they are high, you will get the high frets coming into play. So if you are a, a kind of player who likes the feel of a dead flat neck, which a lot of people do because it means that the, um, the action, the playing action in the middle is quite relatively low, you have to more than likely have to make sure your frets are very carefully leveled okay so that's one of the constraints of having a flat um, neck relief if you are somebody who likes to hit harder um, and possibly you might have some uneven frets and you you aren't able to level them then you may have to dial in um, by slacking off loosening your truss rod allow the strings to pull more curvature into the neck more relief um, which is this is the case here now so I can kind of hit this really hard and have to work really hard to make the strings flap against the, the frets. Um, that's the principle of it. Um, like I say, I've probably picked the wrong um, the wrong guitar to show you this on because I probably I might need to take the adjuster off here and see if I can. It might be uh, the kind that needs boosting with a bit of a, an extra washer in there. Sometimes that happens. You get on old guitars. Um, when the truss rod runs out of ef effective travel, sometimes, um, I don't know, I really don't know why it happens, but sometimes you can give it back some, some oomph by taking the adjuster off and fitting a couple of nuts or washers to the end, which kind of start the screwing in process further out, giving you more uh, screw thread on the adjuster. And that, that I did that the other day with somebody's guitar, I've forgotten what it was, oh my goodness, anyway, it fixed the problem and uh, it was, oh, it was um, Chris's old uh, SG, vintage Gibson SG, not vintage brand, Gibson SG, and it had run out of any adjustment room, um, and it was, uh, it, yeah, it was massively relieved. So I put a couple of little, um, little small nuts between the end of the adjuster 
and the stop part and that created more of a bite and I was able to dial a huge amount of relief out of it <clears throat> which made it nice and flat to play, relatively flat. Anyway, so the point about the, the truss rod is, um, like I say, if it's working you can't really break it that easily, you'd have to really wrench it to snap anything. In a case like this, um, it's hard to show you it making effect because it's, it, I think it may not be a very functional. As it happens, it plays quite nicely for me as it is, so I'm not massively worried, but I think I will, off camera, we'll take the adjuster off and see if I can boost its strength a little bit. Um, but in principle, I would say uh, you want to do th these things when you get a neck. When it's strung up to pitch, you want to check. If it's a, a bolt-on neck like an SG, start at the last fret, because that's very flexible. Um, if it's a Les Paul, start with a stiffened neck, leaves the body, and measure the mid middle point. And I would be saying a gap of about 0.1 to 0.2 millimeters is a good start point. But I keep saying these are only means to an end. The end goal in all of this is for you to get to a, a, a feel of a playing action that works for your, your kind of strumming, picking, and your kind of music and your, the feel that you like. And there's no absolute. So the following somebody's specifications is a waste of time. I always say it's far better that you get your head around the principles of it, um, understand what the truss rod does and doesn't do, and the best way to do that is to make adjustments. So you could, if you had a guitar that you really liked, but you still wanted to experiment to find out, do this thing of measuring the gap in the middle and make a note of it, then make adjustments in all directions, see how far it goes and see how much that changes. You'll be amazed that a tiny, relatively tiny increase in relief curvature will give you a relative increase in playing height or playing action in around about the middle of the guitar that makes it feel completely different um, to a guitar with let's say a tenth of a millimeter less in, in relief or curvature right so it's a huge amount of difference and it's much better for you to experience that by doing it likewise experience what happens when you go the other way and you flatten it almost completely and see what happens to the when you start getting fret slap, which is where the rotating string will hit the frets as it goes round in its slightly erratic pattern, and or how um, how a combination of a flat radius, a flat relief, flat neck, and low bridge action or last fret action, as I call it, those two things together can make um, can create quite a bit of fret buzz as well. But equally, put some back bow into it, tighten it until it's completely the opposite way without you know going so far you have to swing on it but tighten it until you can look down the neck and see the back bow and then try playing notes down here and the thing is if you can if you can see right now what the difference is on a neck that responds you'll know when you buy a guitar or go and test one out at somebody's house who's selling it and you play down here and it's like oh my god none of the notes will sound then you'll be pretty confident it's back bow and you'll look down there and you go oh yeah it's back bow it's humped right and you'll know the first thing you need to do, and if you brought a, you ask the seller, or if you brought a, you know, smart to take one of these or one of these four millimeters or five millimeters, either or both of those with you, you'll be in a position to just check it. And if it doesn't adjust, you don't want to buy the guitar because you're going to be stuck with it. I took this in part exchange, so in a way, I wasn't too upset if it didn't adjust. But there you go. Anyway, that's the that's a key thing, key principle. Find out for yourself what it does. Measure where you start from using this technique. Um, if you aren't comfortable doing that, stick a cap on the first fret. Hold down your last fret. Like I say, SG, where the neck is all out of the body, hold it down there. Uh, if it's like a, a strap, maybe there. If it's like a, a solid body, let's pull there. And then measure. Now people get oh, seventh fret, eighth fret, ninth fret, tenth fret. People get really crappy about it. Pick halfway, right? The maximum curvature is gonna be halfway. Right, and make the measurement and you can use your feeler gauges to do that. It's a little bit fiddly but stick it stick with it and you'll you'll get to a point where you can you can add in you can move it to and fro without it moving the string um, and you'll see the point at which it starts to move the string uh, in which case you know you're somewhere between those two gauges so you can make an approximation. None of this is rocket science or precise science. So you'd be saying okay I've got about 0.2 and you might say, well, I want to see what it's like with 0.1. So adjust it down to 0.1, do it, feel it, and then you'll know the difference for yourself. Okay, that's the main principle. Um, 
even if I could have adjusted this one physically in front of your eyes, it's kind of impossible to show you the difference on the camera, really, because uh, the, the cameras never show you uh, this kind of long view down the, the neck, um, compressed or foreshortened the way that we can with our eyes. So your eyes are far better at looking at this down the neck um, than we can do with the camera. It never reveals it clearly on the camera. But it's a good thing to do, even though it's under gravity, and it's if you're holding it like this, of course the neck is pulling it slightly flatter due to gravity. But if you look down, it's a conservative guess, if you look down here and it's got tons of relief on it, you can guarantee that when you go like that, it'll have a little bit more. So if you see it with tons of relief, you might want to just check that it adjusts to somewhere flatter if you like it like that. So those are, those are two things, by the way, as we're just coming up, time, yeah, time. Those are two things I often ask people when they're considering sending me an old guitar down for a setup. The first thing I'll say is send me some close-up pictures of the frets because that's critical to how much life there's left in them. No point spending a lot of money on a good setup and fret leveling if by the time you've done it, you've got no fret metal left. So there's a kind of minimum amount you need. And the second really important one is does the truss rod work? Does it adjust? And if, if you can, if you're getting someone's guitar to set up or if you're buying it, get them to make an adjustment and say, because if they say, yes, it does, I saw, you know, I saw it change the curve of the neck and then you get it and it doesn't, you can have, you have good grounds to go back and say, it's not as described, it doesn't adjust and I can't fix this. Um, so it's not as described and I'd like a refund. Because there's nothing worse than having a guitar you can't alter. Now I'm gonna do some off camera stuff and, and I've got, the reason I got this out today is I want to do a tiny fret level because I love how this sounds and plays, but it's a couple of little, bend outs here. They're not choking, they're just a little bit zizzier than I would like. And I was playing at a gig the other day and I just found it just cut, slightly cut off a note when I needed it to sustain. So I'm gonna do a tiny bit more, but that's why I got this out. Meantime, I'll have a look at this truss rod and see if I can get it to do anything at all. All right, there's the quick video. Ray, I hope you enjoyed that, hope it was useful. Um, I'll try and do another one soon.